Right now, we are given an initial position and initial velocity of the projectile and a bunch of questions that test our understanding of kinematics in two dimensions. Like we need to find the horizontal range of the projectile or the horizontal distance between the cliff and the point where the projectile hits the ground. Then the maximum height the projectile reaches above the cliff and then velocity of the projectile at three seconds after the launch. So, what is the very first thing that you must do? Yes, right, we must first draw a diagram of the question. This is the cliff from where the projectile is launched, and this is the ground below. Our projectile will be launched from this point like this, and it will follow this trajectory, right? Now let us assign the x-axis and y-axis like this. Also, let us assign the origin at this point. Now we are told that the height of the cliff is 80 meters, which means y0, which we also call the initial y. Value of the projectile is 80 meters. Then we are given the magnitude of the initial velocity, or the speed with which the projectile is launched, is 30 meters per second, and denote it using v0. Next, we are given the angle of launch, which is 30 degrees above the horizontal. We denote it using theta. What we do not know yet is, first, how far the projectile will go. To find that, we will label this distance as x. The initial position of the projectile, which we denote as x0, is 0 meters here. Next, we need to find the maximum height the projectile reaches above the cliff. See the maximum height of the projectile will be the highest vertical point it reaches during its motion, or this point, and we label it as y max. Then finally, we need to find the velocity of the projectile at three seconds after the launch. Let us assume that the projectile will be somewhere here at three seconds. We will find this position using the equations, so don't worry about the accuracy of this chosen point. The instantaneous velocity vector will look something like this at this point. Let the magnitude of this velocity, or the speed, be v, and the angle it makes with horizontal be phi like this, and we need to find this value at t equals 3 seconds. Because we have divided the entire space as x and y axes, therefore here comes the first important step. We must break the velocities into two parts, one horizontal and one vertical. Let us first break the initial velocity. Imagine a right triangle where the hypotenuse represents the initial velocity of the projectile. In any right triangle, the side adjacent to the angle is found using the cause of the angle, and the side opposite the angle is found using the sine of the angle. So in our case, the horizontal component of velocity lies along the adjacent side, and we find it by multiplying v0 with cause of the angle. This gives us the horizontal velocity. The vertical component lies along the opposite side, and we find it by multiplying v0 with sine of the angle. This gives us the vertical velocity. Now, for this velocity, we can draw this right triangle, and thus the horizontal velocity will be v cos phi, and the vertical velocity will be v sine phi. It will be negative because we have defined the positive y-axis like this. Also, gravity g will act like this, and it will be 9.8 meters per second squared. Also, generally, we assume there is no air resistance. This means there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction, and a sub x equals zero, which means there is no acceleration in the x direction, and also a sub y equals negative g, because the only acceleration in vertical direction is gravity, and it always acts downward in the negative y direction. With this, we are now all set to solve any type of projectile motion question. Now you only need these two kinematic equations, namely the displacement equation, which is s equals s, zero plus u zero t plus half a, t square, where s0 is the initial position, u0 is the initial velocity, a is the acceleration, and t is the time.
This equation helps you find the position of the projectile at any time. The second equation is the velocity equation, which is V equals U, 0, plus A, T. And it helps you find how fast the projectile is moving at any moment. Just remember to apply these equations separately in horizontal and vertical directions using the correct components of velocity and acceleration. Now, for the x direction, we have x equals x0 plus ux0 t plus half ax times t square. This is a very simple case because the initial value of the x position of the projectile is x0, which is 0. Also, a sub x is 0. Then ux0 is the initial horizontal velocity of the projectile, which is v0 cos theta. And t is the total time of flight. So finally, we are left with x equals v0 cos theta multiplied by t. Now, what about velocity in the x direction? We have v sub x equals u0 sub x plus a sub x times t. Substitute these values to get v sub x at any time as v0 cos theta. Now for the y direction, we have y equals y, 0 plus uy0 t plus half a sub y times t square. Here, y0 is the initial vertical position of the projectile, which is the height of the cliff. uy0 is the initial vertical velocity, which is v0 sine theta. a sub y is negative g. So when we plug these in, the equation becomes y equals y, 0 plus v, 0 sine theta, multiplied by t minus half g, t square. This equation helps us find the vertical position of the projectile at any time t. Now to find the vertical velocity at any time, we use the second equation, v sub y equals u y, 0 plus a sub y times t. Substituting the values, we get v sub y equals v, 0 sine theta, minus g times t. Remember, a positive value of v sub y means it's still going upward, while a negative value means it has started coming down. We can solve any projectile motion question using just these four simple equations. Yes, just these four simple equations. Whether it's finding how far the projectile goes, how high it rises, how long it stays in the air, or what its speed is at any moment, these equations cover it all. You can think of them as your cheat codes for solving any projectile motion question. Now first, we want to find the value of the horizontal range of this projectile. For that, we will have to find total time of flight, which means the time t when the projectile hits the ground, or this point. What is the value of y coordinate of the projectile at this point? Yes, it is zero. So which equation should we use? Of course, this one, because we know the value of all the variables except t. Substitute the values here to get zero equals y. Zero is 80 plus 30 times sine 30 degrees times t minus half of 9.8 t square. On simplifying, we are left with this quadratic equation in terms of t, which is super easy to solve. We get these two values of t, and obviously t cannot be negative, which means t is 5.85 seconds. Once we have the time of flight, we can use the x equation to find the range. x equals 30 times cos 30 degrees times t, or 5.85, which is nearly 152 meters. This is the horizontal range of our projectile. Next, we want to find the maximum height above the cliff. What do you think happens at this highest point? Yes, the vertical velocity of the projectile keeps decreasing due to gravity and eventually becomes zero at the highest point because the projectile stops rising and is just about to start falling back down. This means we will use this equation which contains v sub y, which equals 30 sine 30 degrees minus g times t. Now set v sub y equals zero. This will give us the time to reach the top point. t equals 30 sine 30 degrees over g, or 1.53 seconds. 
Once we have this, now we will use the y equation again to get y equals 80 plus 30 times sine 30 degrees times t, where t is 1.53 minus half of 9.8t square or 1.53 square. This gives y nearly equal to 91.48 meters. That means this distance will be 91.48 meters. So, the maximum height above the cliff, or this distance, will be equal to 91.48 minus 80, or 11.48 meters. That was super duper easy. Finally, we need to find the velocity of the projectile at t equals 3 seconds. It's super duper easy. We use v sub x equals v 0 cos theta, or 30 times cos 30 degrees, or nearly 26 meters per second. Then we use v sub y equals this, or 30 sine 30 degrees minus g times t will be 3. This gives v sub y as minus 14.4 meters per second. Negative sign indicate that the velocity will be in the negative y direction. So if we draw a right triangle out of this horizontal and vertical velocity component, we get this. Now phi will be this angle, and the magnitude of this velocity or speed of the projectile v will be this hypotenuse. So v equals square root of 26 square plus 14.4 square, or 29.72 meters per second. Then we have cos phi as 26 over 29.72, or 0.875. So phi equals cos inverse of this, or nearly 29 degrees below the horizontal. And that's it. With these four equations, you're now ready to confidently solve any projectile motion question that comes your way. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.